thank you for stopping by welcome to my brand new youtube channel dedicated to diy projects on the cheap my name is jc many of my fishing and hunting friends call me the cuban redneck this is how this channel got its name that's actually that's kind of an inside joke it has a little bit of history but we're not going to get into that right now however i am going to mention that i was uh i was kind of surprised because at a recent gathering i mentioned that, that, that you know the channel was going live this week and what was the name and what was it about and uh, I was told that that's a derogatory name and that it was offensive to some people. I don't know who they're talking about because the channel is about me and it's referring to me. Uh, you know, thank God I get up. I woke up every morning thanking God that I grew up in an era where boys were boys, girls were girls. We used to call each other all kinds of names. Nobody grew up defective that I know of. So understand that I'm Florida grown Southern boy and that's what we call each other around here. If you got a problem with that, I respect that. Perhaps this channel is not for you. On the other hand, if you like to do things on the cheap, whether it's, uh, you know, a shelf or uh, converting a plain old garage into a workspace, perhaps this is a channel you want to follow. I'm starting from scratch, so basically your uh, support is greatly appreciated, and uh, especially if you subscribe, share, and like future videos. Uh, how did this come about? It's really simple. Uh, my wife and I have been talking about re early retirement for, for quite some time. And uh, when the opportunity came uh, to downsize and moved out to Southwest Florida, uh, Charlotte Harbor to be more exact, uh, we just jumped on it. Uh, this is a new property for us. It's, you know, it's considerable a downsize, but uh, we're making the best out of it. Uh, we're actually doing a lot of projects around the house. Uh, I'm building a surround sound system uh, in the living room where I'm building all the speakers. I got full footage for that. I'm also converted the garage into a, a full working space. I'm going to be making lures and things of that nature. So if that is up your alley, please subscribe. Uh, show me some love. And um, I guess the first thing we're going to do is show you how uh, what I've done with the garage and uh, what we, how we got here. Believe it or not, one of the biggest challenges you're going to face in the planning of a garage workspace is going to be the planning itself. That is because companies like Google and Apple have stopped supporting Flash, which was the key platform for this type of tool. That is the reason why there are no more online free tools for designing a shop. Doing my research, the only one I found was Grizzly. Although it is a very nice tool, you have to understand that this was put together as a sales tool for their products. You still can use it to get an idea, but you just have to ignore the scale, especially when it comes to the room dimensions. I've had the privilege to work for several boat builders as well as race teams. And something I have taken away from these shops and fabrication facility is the way they are set up. Almost all NASCAR, NHRA shops and boat building facility I have visited are set up in a particular order on what is called from dirty to clean. That means the raw materials come in at one end of the facility and as they are processed throughout each of the stations, they get cleaner and more purified with the end results being the final product. Although my garage workspace is only 15 by 26, I want to implement the same type of layout. That means that all the cutting and the sanding will be done on one side of the shop while the painting and assembly on the opposite end. One key feature I need to be able to achieve is the ability to leave my truck in the garage when we travel. So no matter what, I need to be able to push everything against the walls and make room for both the truck and my bike. When it comes to the table saw station, the drill press, and the miter saw station, I will be building custom units. However, when it comes to benches, I decided to buy them. After a little bit of research, I decided to go with the Harbor Freight 48 inch units. They were on sale for $70 each and although I see myself modifying them, I think that for the money, they make a pretty good base. With that said, I will tell you in advance that the instructions suck and yes, these things need quite a few modifications. Too many to go over on this video, so look for a how to assemble and modify the Harbor Freight 48 inch workbench as a separate one. The Series 1000 Craftman Rollers is something I brought over from my other shop. Had I not had it and budget permitting, I would have gone with a new setup. I think some of the new Craftman stuff looks pretty good, but after seeing how this one fit, I decided to go and get the top and consider this project complete. 
At the end of the day, I think that the benches look pretty good and although I had to modify them, I think they will work just fine. Please support this channel by subscribing, liking and sharing. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. Thank you.